Praise God. Good morning, church. Hallelujah. Uh, good morning. Good morning. I'm yeah. Yes. Yes. Come, please. Come, please. Hallelujah. Yes, I many. Testing. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Hallelujah. Let us start our service this morning with a word of prayer. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for another beautiful Sunday that you have given us. And also, Lord, we want to celebrate today, Lord, Father God, as you have risen, Lord, Father God, from the cross, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your blood that is shed on the cross, Father. We thank you for your love, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray that you will continue to protect us, Father God, wherever we are right now, Father. Continue to bless us, Jesus. Continue to, to fill us with your anointing, Lord, Father God. Hallelujah. Just bless and bless and bless us, Lord. Father, as we, as we proceed with our morning service this morning, Lord Jesus, I pray that you would just fill us, Father God, and as we listen to your word, Father, you open our hearts, you open our ears to receive your word, Jesus, this morning, hallelujah. Just bless us, Lord, we thank you, Lord, we thank you, Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen, amen, hallelujah. Let us sing, let us sing, blessed be your name.
thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. I pray that you would just bless our service this morning. Those who are watching from their home, Father God, I pray that you would just continue to bless us and touch them, Lord Jesus. Touch them, Lord Father God, wherever they are, Jesus. Hallelujah, for we are together, Lord Jesus, for we stand together as one, Lord Father God, in worshiping you, Lord Father, declaring your name, exalting your name, Father, and lift up your name high, Jesus, for there is no one else like you, Lord Father, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, hallelujah. As we continue our service this morning, Father God, I pray that you would just, that you would just anoint your servant, Father, as you speak for your word, Father God. Fill him with your word, fill him with your anointing and wisdom, Jesus, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your presence. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Stay where you are. Get to worship the Lord. Amen and amen. Praise God. That's a wonderful song, yeah? Calvary covers it all. And that's why we are here today, even though we are still in the MCO period. But praise God, we can worship the Lord wherever we are. And uh, I hope this morning you will be encouraged through the Word of God. And uh, okay, so just go to worship the Lord in your heart wherever you are. Because Jesus is with you. Jesus said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Jesus will be with us wherever we are. And Jesus will be with us forever. That's what the Bible says. Praise God. So this morning, let's worship the Lord continually uh, with our offering. All right. So praise God. I put in the flyers uh, for the members and friends with our WhatsApp group. You can see the uh, flyers there. Uh, we have our church account there. And you can give your offering through online uh, giving. All right, continue to give to the Lord because giving is worship. Giving is worship. So let's worship the Lord without giving. Praise God. And uh, let's uh, let's pray for the offering again. Our one and only Brother Jay is here. So let's uh, ask him to pray for the offering. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus, O oh God. Lord, we thank you that we can come together, Lord God, to praise and to worship you this Jesus, morning, O oh dear Father. You. Father, we thank you for all the blessing, O oh God, that we have comes from you, O oh dear Father. Lord, this morning, Hallelujah. even as we give back a small portion, O oh dear Father, Amen. Lord, we pray that, Lord, that you bless it for the furtherance and extension of your kingdom. And for those who have given unto your kingdom, Lord, may you bless them abundantly, O oh dear Father, Lord. Multiply it, O oh God, for them, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, we thank you, we praise you, Hallelujah. we give you all the glory, we give you all the praise, O oh God. In Jesus' most precious name, we ask and we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Before we give, I just want to encourage you. I received a testimony a few days ago that uh, one of our sister in, uh, in the church um, shared, uh, but she allowed me to share this. So I was... Uh, I post this in our WhatsApp group how she was blessed and she was very happy and praising God. That, you know, the husband was not very open, a little bit of uh, skeptic regarding church. But then she shared about the problem in the church because uh, at this situation, this moment, we do uh, experience quite a tough time for the church. Yeah? So, but the husband was moved to help and to bless the church. So, but then after a few days, uh, she shared a testimony to me. Uh, and allow me to share this, that uh, her husband was blessed almost immediately, uh, five times more than what he has given Hallelujah. and helped the church, you know. So we praise God for that. I want to encourage you to continue Amen. to support the church and uh, give to the Lord. Uh, we believe God is faithful uh, to fulfill His promise in His Word. Uh, he said in His Word that it is more blessed to give than to receive. All right, the Bible says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, shall men put into your bosom. So give with all of your heart. Uh, give to the Lord, because I believe our giving uh, really have an eternal effect uh, to the church, to the kingdom of God, to this world, and also to, uh, to our life. 
Amen. If you believe that, say amen. And as you give, you can expect your blessing in return that the Lord will bless you abundantly, not only financially, but also everything that you need in life. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. So last week I was encouraging you. I changed the uh, mode of my preaching. Um, I don't preach through the books of the Bible because actually every Sunday we cover the New Testament epistle. All those small, small books in the New Testament uh, to, to share to you what God's Word is speaking to us uh, here in the epistles. But because of the situation today and what we experience and what the people in the world experience, what the church is experiencing, I believe a lot of people uh, are having a hard time. Uh, a lot of people... Uh, you know, they are in trials and testing at this time. But uh, yes, we keep on praying that this uh, pandemic will cease and will stop. And I do believe the church worldwide are praying. Believers are praying everywhere. And I know all the people in the world are praying. Uh, this morning I look at the news uh, in the CNN. U.S. has passed the 2000 a 20,000 mark of uh, debt, total debt in U.S. Well, that is very, very serious. Yeah. So keep on praying. Uh, people in the U.S. keep on praying and believing God uh, for a miracle to happen. Uh, we are not needing breakthrough now. We need a miracle. Okay. We need a miracle. And we believe in the God of miracle. We believe that God will do miracle in our midst and in our church. All right, so continue to pray. Um, yeah, many people are having a hard time. Um, one of my praying posted also yesterday that the uh, domestic violence, uh, uh, you know, increasing here in Malaysia uh, because of the uh, movement control uh, order. So a lot of people, they are in the houses uh, because of lack of finances, lack of food and all. So uh, husband and wife quarrel and a lot of abuse uh, in the family, a lot of violence in the family. So pray for that also, all right? Pray for that also. So continue to pray that the, the Lord will really move uh, in our midst that uh, this pandemic will cease. And we pray that God will really uh, turn this world around and uh, really, you know, move his hand, his mighty hand, to really make this pandemic to cease in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, say amen. 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 Well, today we celebrate the uh, Resurrection Sunday. Many people are calling it Easter, but we call that Resurrection Sunday. Uh, there is a reason to that. Well, those people who want to keep that tradition, Easter, I'm not against it, but I want to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. When we talk about the greatest things that uh, happen in the history, I do believe the resurrection Sunday or the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the greatest thing that ever happened in this world. Not only his birth when he came, he was born into this world as a man, but when Jesus died and when Jesus was resurrected, that is the greatest things in the world. Like what we sang this song this morning, Calvary covers it all. Because in the death and the resurrection of Jesus, this is the foundation of the Christian faith, the foundation of the Christian belief. You know, we, we cannot call ourselves Christian if we do not believe in the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We cannot live as a believer. We cannot fulfill God's mission and commission in our life. Uh, we cannot believe in God's power. We cannot believe in God's forgiveness. We cannot believe in the eternal life that is promised by God to us. If we do not believe the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But because that is the foundation of the Christian belief. That is the foundation. Jesus indeed was risen from the dead. He is his reason. The angel proclaimed that when they came into his tomb. Early in the morning, these few ladies. But the angel rolled the stone Opened the tomb and sat on that, uh, you know, the mount, 
the stone and, and said, He is not here. He is risen. Go and tell his brethren. Go and tell his disciples. He is not here. He is risen. And this is what I want to talk about. And I've been thinking what to share today. And you know, I've been thinking. And this uh, incident, this story in the Bible keep coming back to me when the children of Israel crossed the Jordan, even before they crossed the Jordan, uh, by the leading of Joshua. Because during the time Moses has died, now Joshua took the leadership and crossed, about to cross the Jordan, go to the promised land to possess the land. And God instructed Joshua to divide the land for the children of Israel. And uh, while God was instructing them to divide the land for the children of Israel, God said, you, ne you need to set aside six cities. And those cities are called the city of refuge. And I want to talk about this a little bit here to encourage us uh, this morning. All right? This morning. I, I want to talk about the city of refuge. Because uh, in, in this time, this is the thing that we need to have. This is the thing that we need to hear, an exhortation, an encouragement to encourage us in our walk with God, to encourage us in the situation like this, in this pandemic uh, situation, you know, where we can see left and right, people are dying. A lot of people are dying. Yesterday, I look at uh, in, in my Facebook, one of the video, I do not know where it is. Uh, um, they, they look like... Uh, Arabs or, or these uh, Eastern people and uh, one of the guy led this uh, I don't know a cameraman or reporter go into this uh, building look like a hotel they turn it into a hospital where they treat all these uh, people uh, you know infected by the virus and every door that he opened uh, you know dead bodies are there wrapped in this you know uh, all are wrapped uh, on the sides and the bed, you know, was stacked and all that. And he opened another room that's full of bodies. Opened another room, they went upstairs and opened the rooms, all dead bodies. Wow. You know, uh, the, the Bible is here for us. The Word of God is here for us to encourage us that God is here, that God is alive. We are here and we can put our trust in Him. But we need to know Him. We need to know His Word. We need to know what He said in His Word. The Word of God reveals His character. The Word of God reveals who He is and what He does for us and what He will do for us if we believe Him. So that's why we are sharing this to you. That's why we preach the Word. That's why we preach the Gospel. All of our life, every day, not only every Sunday, but that is a life, uh, our life, that is a lifestyle. That is what Paul the Apostle uh, told uh, us in Titus. He said the word of God in due time, Titus chapter 1 verse 3. In due time, God has manifested his word through preaching. And Paul says, was committed unto me by the commandment of God, our Savior. So God, you know, through the word, through the preaching, through, through encouragement like this, we can see God's character. We can understand Him. We know how He works. We are talking about God who created the universe. We, create, we talk about God who is there. We talk about God who has all the power uh, to create everything, the world and everything that is in it, the universe, the moon and the stars. We talk about God who is the Alpha and Omega. We talk about God who is the beginning and the end. We talk about God. We are not talking about somebody who will come and go. We talk about God who is eternal. God Himself. And when we begin to see Him in His Word, when we read His Word, when we know His character, that will encourage us. Even the Word of God come to a point, He said, Do not be afraid of them who kills the body, but cannot kill the soul. But fear Him. Who is able to kill the body. You know, and throw his soul into the lake of fire. So, if you believe God, there is hope in him. Because after this life on earth, we have a life after this. And if you believe him, if you receive him in Jesus Christ, 
then you will have this hope in him. So when, when God instructed Joshua to divide the land, to you know, when they crossed the Jordan to the promised land, uh, God said, you need to set us six cities. These are the city of refuge. You know, when you look at the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, there's a lot of symbolism and there's a lot of types. And all those symbolism and types refers to Jesus Christ, right? It refers to Jesus. For example, the tree of life in the Garden of Eden, that is Jesus, right? And it ha uh, we mentioned again in Revelation, the last chapter, the tree of life. There's a lot of types and symbolism that refers to Jesus Christ and also refers to his ministry. Uh, for example, the brazen altar, uh, the brazen serpent in Numbers 21, that, it, that, that talks about Jesus. Jesus became our sin. All right, Jesus became our sin. Talk about the tabernacle in the wilderness. That talks about Jesus, the way to the Lord, the way to God. If you talk about the Lamb, uh, mentioned many times in the Old Testament, especially in the book of Exodus, Leviticus, uh, Deuteronomy, and all of this, the Lamb is a reference, is a symbol of Christ. He's the Lamb of God. And when you come into the New Testament, that becomes very clear to us that the Lamb is Jesus, the Son of God. In John chapter 20, uh, 1 verse 29, he said, The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. So it's the same thing with the city of refuge. The city of refuge actually is a picture of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Jesus is our mighty God. Jesus is the Lord of Sabbath. Means the Lord of hosts. Jehovah Sabbath or Jehovah Sabaoth. He is the Lord of hosts. He is our protector. He is our refuge. He is our shield. He is our buckler. That is what being mentioned in the book of Psalms many times. Jesus is our city of refuge today. So we want to see this a little bit here in the Bible about the city of refuge. So allow me to read to you Joshua chapter 20, verse 1 to 9. All right, so this is a story in the Bible, and we will go into this later on. I want to explain to you, to encourage you, to make you to see that Jesus really indeed is our city of refuge. So that in this time of fears, in this time of uncertainty, in this time of trials and testing, in this, this time of difficulties, we can run to Him. We can run to Him because He is our city of refuge. I, I've been memorizing and meditating Psalm 46. The first verse, verse it says, God is our refuge and strength. <laughs> A very present help in times of trouble. That is very encouraging. God is our refuge and strength. The very present help in trouble. Means when you are in trouble, God is there. He is present. He is right there for us. Now we are experiencing this time. God is right here for us. Because He is our refuge and strength. Wow. You know, there is a, there's a lot of good things happen also during this MCO and during this pandemic. We don't only look at the negative things, right? I was jokingly tell my wife and tell my, my friends here in the church that a lot of good things actually will happen during this uh, MCO and during this pandemic because everybody, everybody stay at home, right? Yeah. Uh, husband and wife can spend time together. Husband who always run around, no time for the wife, so now he cannot run anywhere. He can always see the wife every day. And I think a lot of wives out there are very, very happy because the husband stay at home. You know, the husband no time to go find other girls. The hus <laughs> husband no time to go uh, drink, uh, get drunk, or waste money to gamble and all. I think many wives are so happy. All right? Another good thing happened is that 
after this MCO, I think many wives will get pregnant. Or some don't have baby, will have babies. Those already have babies, they have more babies. <laughs> another, another good thing that happened during this MCO is that uh, many people can save money, right? Because uh, you cannot go to uh, cinema, you cannot spend money unnecessarily, you know? Everybody just go out and buy important things or essential things. You know, no lepa-lepa in these uh, malls, shopping malls and all. A lot of good things happen. But in terms of spiritual things, I do believe a lot of good things happen. We begin to turn to the Lord. We begin to know Him. Meditate on the Word of God and begin to see God. Right? So, here in Joshua 20, the Lord spoke unto Joshua, saying, verse 1, verse 2, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, Appoint out for you cities of refuge, whereof I spake unto you by the hand of Moses. So God has already spoken this through Moses before. So now before they crossed the Jordan, God told Joshua, Reminded Joshua to tell the people that he has instructed Moses regarding this city of refuge. In verse 3, uh, that the slayer that killeth means the murderer, the slayer. Uh, a person who kills somebody that killeth any person unawares and unwittingly may flee thither. And they shall be your refuge from the avenger of blood. And when, you know, in the, in the uh, Bible times, uh, when somebody kills somebody, of course the family uh, will be responsible, you know, feel responsible and they, they, they want to take a revenge of the, the person who murdered one of their family. And they will be pursuing the person when the person run away. But sometimes the person do this unaware, you know, unintentionally. So because of that, God provided for them city of refuge so they can run to the city and stay in that city. The moment they reach the city, the, the person who wants to take a revenge cannot enter the city and cannot demand the person to be delivered to him so that he can take revenge. The person must stay in that city and he, he will not go out from that city. I want to explain that to you later on. We'll come back to that. In verse 4, And when he that flee unto one of those cities shall stand at the entering of the gate of the city, and shall declare his cause in the ears of the elders of that city, they shall take him into the city unto them, and give him a place that he may dwell among them. Verse 5, And if the avenger of blood, the avenger of blood also when you, we look at today talk about the enemy. They talk about Satan, the avenger of blood. Pursue after him, then they shall not deliver the slayer up into his hand. Because he smote his neighbor unwittingly and hated him not before time. Verse 6, And he shall dwell in that city until he stand before the congregation for judgment and until the death of the high priest. That is very important. He need to stay in that city. To be judged and all. Until the death of the high, high priest. That shall be in those days. Then shall the slayer return. And come unto his own city. And unto his own house. And unto the city from whence he fled. Appointed Kadesh. Uh, in Galilee. In Mount Naphtali. And Shechem in Mount Ephraim, and Kirjat Arba, which is Hebron, in the mountain of Judah. And on the other side of Jordan by Jericho eastward, they assigned Bezer in the wilderness upon the plain out of the tribe of Reuben. And Ramoth in Gilead, out of the city of Gad, and Golan in Bashan, out of the tribe of Manasseh. These were the cities appointed for all the children of Israel and for the stranger that sojourned among them. Now, notice that for the children of Israel, for the believers, today is for the Christian and also for the stranger that sojourned among them. 
Because Christianity is for everybody. Um, that whosoever kills any person at unawares might flee thither, might run there and not die by the hand of the avenger of blood until he stood before the congregation. Now this is just one of the references uh, regarding the city of refuge. But let me come back here, talk about this city of refuge, which is the picture of Jesus Christ. We are talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The greatest thing that happened in the history of men. That's why I can believe Him. That's why I trust Him. That's why I gave my life to Him. Because Jesus is alive. Because Jesus was resurrected from the dead. If Jesus was not resurrected, Paul the Apostle says in Corinthians, then our faith is in vain. In futile. We believe in vain. Why do we believe in Jesus? Why do, you, we, do, why do we preach Him? Why are we willing to die for Him if He was not resurrected from the dead? It's useless. But why we preach Him? Why in the days of the apostles they are willing to die for Him and even us today? We believe in Jesus Christ because He is alive. He was resurrected from the dead. And the Bible says he is seated at the right hand of God the Father. Amen. Ever liveth to make intercession for us. He is there. My faith in him is alive. My faith in him is sure. My faith in him is sure. He is alive. He is there waiting for me. In Acts chapter 7 when Stephen was stoned to death. Before he died, when people were stoning him, he opened his eyes and looked to heaven. The Bible says the heaven was open and he saw Jesus standing there. And Stephen said, I saw Jesus standing there. And the Bible says those who were stoning Stephen saw his face like the face of an angel. There was glory. His face was lit because of the glory of Jesus. Wow. Very interesting promise. Very interesting thing for you and I to believe. Jesus is alive. And He becomes our city of refuge. Why I want to share this to you this morning? Because there's something at the end I want to tell you. How great and wonderful this thing is. For Jesus to be our high priest and Jesus is our city of refuge. And the Bible says here in Joshua 20, God told Joshua, He said, you need to set aside six cities of refuge. He said, these things I have spoken to Moses before. That was about 40 years before they crossed the Jordan. So it means God has prepared this. God has planned this before, even before they go into the promised land, even though before they possess the land, before the land was divided for every tribe, God has prepared these cities for their deliverance, for their safety, for, 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 you know, for them to, to be saved, to be protected. If this thing happened, this is very important because our salvation, God has planned our salvation before the foundation of the world, the Bible says. Hallelujah. In 1 Peter 1, 18 to 20, it said, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, from your vain conversation or lifestyle received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. God has planned our refuge. God has planned our protection. God has planned our salvation even before we cross the Jordan. Crossing the Jordan speaks about salvation. We cross the Jordan. So Paul, uh, Peter said here, 
that this Jesus who shed his blood for you and I, who redeemed us with his precious blood, which was more precious than gold, was foreordained before the foundation of the world. This city of refuge also was accessible to the people, to the Israelites. They were be within all those cities within at least one day's journey. So the slayer, the murderer who murders unintentionally, accidentally, can run. And, you know, in, in one day or less than one day, he can reach to the city. God makes sure that you can run to the city of refuge and to find salvation. Hallelujah. In the book of Proverbs said, he said, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and are safe. Wow. The city of refuge also is almost like in a healing, in, in an elevated place, a high place where people can see. So if things happen in their life and the avenger of blood come, they can turn and look around and they can see the city of refuge. It's high to be seen in the long distance. He said, this is the, the suburbs area. The city of refuge is to be for safety so that the, the person who has been pursued can live and be protected. It's a place of protection. The city of refuge is a place of protection. The city of refuge is a place where people can run into anytime, 24-7. They can run anytime. It's round the clock. That is the protection. The blood of Jesus protects us all the time. The city of refuge has a lot of signs. God instructed Joshua to tell the people. He said he appointed this city for them. Tell the people. The people know these cities. In the city of refuge during the time of these Israelites, Everybody knows about it. As God's people, as believers, as Israelites, they know about these cities. Because God told Joshua, instruct the people. Tell the people to set aside six city of refuge. So everybody heard about this. As believers in Christ, you should know that you have a city of refuge that you can run into and you will be saved. Come on, say amen. amen. The city of refuge gives protection. It gives shelter. The person can go there. He lived there. He, you know, he plant his crops and he can eat there. He can have his supply. So he can have shelter. He can have provision. Christ is our protection from judgment. In the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 32 to 34. He said, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him us up for us all. How shall he not with him also give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemned? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is reason again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also Make an intercession for us. Jesus is there. Jesus is still working for you and I. He's up there. He's not only sitting at the right hand of the Father. Enjoying himself. But the Bible says he make intercession for us. In Psalm 9 verse 9. He says the Lord also. Will be a refuge. For the oppressed. A refuge in times of trouble. In Philippians 4.19, the Bible says, My God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. We all need a city of refuge. Especially at this time, we need God's protection. We need to have this confidence in Him. We need to have this sense of security. That's why knowledge is so important. Knowledge of the Word. Knowledge of the truth is very important Amen. for us to have this confidence 
and assurance of the security. We need this today. We need a city of refuge. So there are six cities were set aside for the children of Israel. Number one is Kadesh, Shechem, Hebron, Bezer, Ramoth, Golan. I want to give you the meaning of these words. Uh, Kadesh means sanctuary. Kadesh means sanctuary. So the city of refuge shall be your sanctuary. Shechem means shoulder. A shoulder where, where you can lean on that will support you. Hebron means fellowship. So in the city of refuge, you are not alone. You are not isolated. But they will take you in. They will give you provision. They will become your family. You will have fellowship. Bezer means fortress. The city of refuge it is your fortress. It shall be your protection. The avenger of blood cannot enter the city. Once you reach the city of refuge. Bezer means fortress. Ramot means exaltation. That is a very encouraging word. And Golan. Golan means joy. In the city of refuge, there is joy. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, the psalmist says, in your presence there is fullness of joy. Now all these names, all these six cities, actually, when you look at it, the meaning of the names of the city and all actually is the fulfillment of the ministry of Jesus Christ. In us, in our life, Jesus will be your sanctuary. Jesus will be your shoulder to support you. Jesus will be your fellowship. Jesus will be your fortress. Jesus will be your exaltation. Jesus will be your joy. Amen. Is that a fulfillment of Jesus' ministry? Is a fulfillment of Jesus' ministry to you and me today. If you run to Him as a city of refuge, if you receive Him and accept Him as a city of refuge. Hallelujah. So how can Jesus be our city of refuge? How can we do this? Because, yes, Jesus is there. The Bible is there. This message is here. But how to be in there? How to acquire this in your life? How to make this to come to be a reality in your life? That Jesus will be your city of refuge. Mm. That Jesus will be your fortress and your protector. He is our protector. Hallelujah. Amen. So how? Number one, you need to run to Him. You must go to Him. Run to Christ. When the murderer has murdered somebody unintentionally, he need to run to the nearest city of refuge. That's the only way for him to be saved so that the avenger of blood, the person who wants to take a revenge, cannot take hold of him and kill him. You need to run to the nearest city, wherever he may be. Run to Jesus. You need to run to him. You need to embrace Him. You need to believe Him. You need to surrender your life to Him. You need to run into Him. That is what the Bible says. In Proverbs 18.10 For the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and are saved. I want to encourage you today. Run to Jesus. Run to Him. Jesus said in Matthew 11.28 Come unto me, all ye that labor. And are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Amen. Jesus has given you an invitation. Jesus is saying to you. Run to me. All of you who labor. And heavy laden. Those who are tired and weary. In all this life. These trials and testing. Jesus said come to me. Run to me Jesus said. And I will give you rest. Number two. You need to receive him. John 6, 37, he said, All that the Father gives me shall come to me, and him that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. You need to come to Jesus, because in Jesus you will be received. Jesus will not reject you. Jesus will not cast you out. Mm -hmm. Anybody who comes to Jesus, he will receive you. Amen. No matter how great a sinner you may feel about your life, no matter what are the things that you have done in your life, but today, when you run to Him, today when you surrender to Him, 
Jesus will receive you. Amen. You know, we cannot work out our own salvation. We cannot save ourselves. We are like a man who is drowned in the middle of the sea without any help. A person who are drowning, many people are drowning out there. And the only thing you, need, you can do is cry out to God and say, God, help me. Jesus, help me. We cannot work out our salvation. Jesus said in John 15 verse 5, He said, Without me, you can do nothing. You can do nothing. Number four, you have to confess your sin. You have to declare your sin. Because this uh, uh, slayer, this murderer, when he arrived in the city, uh, in the entering of the gate, he needed to stand there in the gate and declare or confess his sin to the elders. So we need to confess our sin. If we, need, if we come to Jesus, if we confess our sins, the Bible says He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. First John 1 John 1.9 So confess your sins to Jesus. Only after confession then forgiveness happens. Then we will have security in our life. And when you enter into the city of refuge, we become part of God's family. When you receive Jesus, you enter into Him, you receive Him, you become one of His children. And when you are in the city, you will have security in the city. Jesus will become your protector. In Philippians chapter 3 verse 20, He said, We have our citizenship, citizenship in heaven. We belong to the citizenship of heaven. We have security in heaven. We will have eternal life. Because you will stay in that city. You will have life in the city. Like Jesus said, abide in me and I in you. Jesus said, in me you will have life. Amen. Wow. I hope you are encouraged by all these words. But we need to remember. Because the Bible says when you run to the city, you need to abide or remain in the city. Until the death of the high priest. Means as long as the high priest is still there. You will be safe. As long as you remain in the city. And the high priest is still there. You will be safe. <laughs> but it's dangerous when you run. Or when you go out from the city. Because when you get out from the city. Then the avenger of blood finds you. He can kill you. Because you are outside from the city. You must not get out from the city. Those Christians, those believers who are already in Christ Jesus, you cannot get out of Jesus. Because the moment you get out of Jesus, the moment you re renounce Jesus, the moment you reject Jesus, then you will have no life in you. Heaven will not be for you anymore. Because only in Christ is eternal life. We need to remember that outside of the city, the avenger of blood is waiting. The devil is waiting outside. You cannot get out of Jesus. Because the moment you get out of Jesus, the devil will pursue you. You remember the man who went down from Jerusalem to Jericho? The moment he left Jerusalem, the house of God, he went down to Jericho. The Bible says he fell among thieves along the way. And they beat him. They robbed him. They left him for dead. He ran out. He ran away. The same thing happened with Jonah. The same thing happened in the days of Solomon. Those enemies, he said, you stay there in the city, don't get out. But then he left and he was killed. We cannot run out of God's will. We cannot get out of God's protection, God's house. We cannot get out of God's fellowship. We cannot get out of God's protection. Because the avenger of blood is there. The Bible says the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. We need to remember that. Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. But if you do not stay there, then you will not abide under His shadow of protection. Ah, oh, hallelujah. I'm excited to share this because this city of refuge, which is a picture of Jesus, there is a high priest there. 
And that high priest also is a picture of Christ. But the difference is, the high priest in the days of Joshua, those were earthly high priests. And they cannot continue. Because they will die. But why Jesus is different here? Because Jesus is alive and He will be alive forevermore. And He will be our high priest eternally. He will be our city of refuge eternally. As long as we abide in Him, He will be our protector eternally. Because He is risen. That's why we celebrate this today. Amen. The truth about Jesus as our high priest. Number one, He lives forever. He can protect us because He lives forever and ever. That's why we can trust His protection. We can believe in Him. We can put our life in Him because He lives forever. Hebrews 2.18 For in that he himself has suffered being tempted he is able to help them that are tempted. Romans 8.34 We have read that. Rom, uh, Hebrews 7.25 Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost. I like that word. Hebrews 7.25 Wherefore he, Jesus, is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by Him, seeing He ever liveth to make intercession for them. Ah, oh, that is very, very powerful. He is able to help them. He is able to save them to the uttermost. That is Jesus. Come and say amen. amen. That is Jesus. If you are having problems today, if you are in fear, if you are worried, right? if you are confused, if you feel hopeless, turn to Jesus because the Bible says He is able to save you to the uttermost. Yes. Hallelujah. Well, I'm having a revival here. Number two, He is better than the earthly priest or the earthly high priest. Why? Because he lives forever. Psalm 110 verse 4. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever. According to the order of Melchizedek. Jesus. Forever. Hebrews 5 verse 6. Just as he says also in another passage. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of God has spoken about Jesus and his ministry for you and I. That he is the high priest. He lives forever and ever. And because he lives forever and ever, he is able to help them, to save them to the uttermost. Hebrews 6.20, where Jesus has entered as a forerunner for us, having become a high priest Forever according to the order of Melchizedek. The, the Bible mentioned this many, many times. Hebrews 4.14 Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. Let us hold fast our belief, our declaration, our faith. Let us hold fast because of Jesus. A high priest that lives forever and ever. Because what he has promised. Because of what he is. Because of, of what his ministry is. He is the high priest forever. According to the order of Melchizedek. No beginning, no end. Hallelujah. Amen. He could continue ever, the Bible says. That's why we can hold fast. We can hold on to him. We can believe in him. There is a song that says, Though my world may fall, then I will still trust Him. Oh, hallelujah. In Matthew 28, verse 18, He has all power and authority. Jesus, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. 
Jesus, who is high and lifted up, Jesus, the name that is above every name, Jesus, he has all the power. The coronavirus is not all powerful. Jesus is all powerful. The coronavirus is not omnipotent. Jesus is omnipotent. Jesus is ruling. Jesus is in control. Hallelujah. You just need to trust Him. Put your life in Him. Run to Him. Make Him to become your city of refuge. Make Him to become your high priest that continue to live forever. And because of that, you can be assured of His protection. Run to Him. Trust Him. That's the only way. I, I want to be practical and I want to be balanced in my preaching here. I'm not saying that nobody died because of Jesus. No. Everybody in this world will die. But the question is whether we are ready. The question is whether we are prepared. Because only in Jesus we can be prepared. Only Jesus. Jesus is the door to heaven. Jesus is the bridge to heaven. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Only Jesus. There's no worry. We, we don't lose anything when we die because we believe in Jesus Christ. Because we have life after this. But if you don't believe in Jesus, you have no hope when you die. Then that will be a very tragic thing that will happen to you. Our life is in the hands of God. Whether you are believers, unbelievers, your life is in God's hand. God is, the one who God is the one who decides how long you can live and when you will die. I, I have heard people who fell from many stories of building. He fell down right at the bottom, yet he did not die. <laughs> Some people, they just fall from the uh, very short tree. You know, or they, they you know, stumble uh, on a stone and they fell and they died. Some people, they just drink a cup of water and they got choked and died. But some people, they fell from many stories of the building, fell, but they did not die. It just proved to us that God is the one who holds our life. Our life is in God's hand. But you know, one day we shall die. Sooner or later we will die. But the question is whether you know that you will have life after this. You will know it when you have Jesus in your life. Wonderful. I want to believe with you and continue to declare with you that this coronavirus will not live long in the mighty name of Jesus. They keep on saying that there is a mutation and new generation of the virus. We declare in the name of Jesus that it will not happen. We declare in the name of Jesus that this pandemic will cease in Jesus' name. We believe that God is there, that God is in control. Well, it's not the end of the world yet. Many people talk about the coming of Jesus. Many people talk about the mark of the beast. Many people talk about the Antichrist coming. No, we have the Bible. Just follow the Bible. Follow the outlines of the Bible, especially in the book of Revelation. We are not there yet. So don't talk about the mark of the beast and all. If you know the sequence in the Bible, you know, as believers, actually, you will not see the mark of the beast. I want to encourage you. Pray. This is a time for you and the church to pray that this thing will be over and we can live a normal life again. Hallelujah. Keep on praying. Remember that Jesus is not in the tomb. Jesus is risen indeed. And He has become our city of refuge. He has became, became our high priest. I want to recite that again. Psalm 46 verse 1. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. We need to run to Him. We need to come to Him. Let your family come to Him. And If you have this revelation in you. If you have this word of God in you. Then all your worries will go. You can sleep at night. You can have peace in your heart. You can enjoy your family. While you are in the uh, period of MCO. But you can have joy in the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to leave you with this word. Be encouraged with this word throughout this week. Remember that Jesus is the, the city of refuge. He is your protector. He is there with you. And he promised to never leave you. And never forsake you. If you need to pray, you need Jesus, you can pray right now. 
Or you can pray in your room. You can pray in your heart right now and say, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, save me. Jesus, I want to come to you. I surrender my life to you. I want to become your believer. I want to become your child. Jesus, have mercy on my sins. I believe in you, Lord. Hallelujah. If you pray that prayer, Jesus hears you and he receives you into his kingdom. Praise God. God bless you. Have a blessed Resurrection Sunday and rejoice in the Lord. God bless you and I'll see you next Sunday. Amen and Amen.